Review scores can be a tricky thing. Some people swear by the 10 point standard, and others by 5 stars. I tend to lean towards 5 stars, although I don't think it's perfect. But I understand that people really don't like seeing a number out of 5. The number 10 represents a perfect game. But I think that 10 degrees on a scale is just too nuanced. I mean, what's the real difference between a 6 and a 5? Or how about a 5 and a 4? Does that 1 degree really make a huge difference? If the game is a 5 out of 10, then it basically sucks, so what's the point of a 4? We've already established that 5 is terrible. Of course, Angry Joe's system is a bit better in handling this situation, where 5 is basically neutral or average. Basically a meh on the 10 point scale. Now a 5 star system also has the same neutral rating with 3 out of 5 stars. 3 being average or meh. But with only 5 stars it gets to the point faster. But why should we care about a neutral score? A meh or an average doesn't tell me anything. And why should the average just be a meh? I mean, are most games only just meh? I guess some people would say that's pretty much correct these days. But after looking at my own reviews, I realized that I really don't review anything under 5 or a 6. And at that point, a few degrees above or below a meh is pointless. So I decided to streamline my system and make it simple while also keeping an out of 10 rating for people that might not understand. My system is basically 4 stars, with 2 stars above and below for outliers. So basically 6 stars, but 2 of which I probably will never use. Here's the rundown, numbered between 5 through 10, starting with 5. 5 equals a bad game, I mean completely awful. This kind of game is completely unfinished, it's glitchy and unplayable or a game that I just didn't have any fun with, and that I couldn't find any redeeming value in the game, other than that it's technically playable. Examples will be the types of games that usually make the worst games list every year. Think Superman 64 or Fallout 76 when it first released. Next is 6. 6 is a game that's just okay. It's not good, but it's not bad either. It's just meh. And not meh as in average, meh as in completely forgettable and boring at worst, and disappointing at best. You could buy this game, but then you'd wonder why after you finish playing it. This is the type of game that you'd wait for a deep sale on. Think Cyberpunk 2077. At 7, we have a game that's good. If anything, this is the average, since games are supposed to be, you know, actually good and enjoyable to play. I feel that most games are going to be 7s unless they do something exceptional. These types of games don't break the mold, but they don't need to. The gameplay is tried and true, and you'll still have a good time playing it. Examples of games like this would be any recent Mario or Ratchet and Clank game, or any modern military shooter. I mean sure, you've played plenty of them before, but they're still good games, and you'll have fun playing them. 8 will be considered a great game. Much like a good game before it but it does something that pushes the envelope. A game that's familiar, but it flips it on its head and makes something completely new out of it. All of this equates to a fun, memorable experience and worth a buy. And if anything, a game that genuinely surprised me with how much fun I had playing it. Examples will be the recent Forza Horizon games and some indie games like Next Machina. Nine is a category I rarely venture into, if at all. This is a game that is excellent, nearly perfect, and has replayability for years. A game that you can go back to time and time again and have as much fun as you did the first time you played it. And even if the game has technical flaws, it hits that sweet spot between difficulty and fun in spite of it. This is a game that you'll remember fondly and recommend that everyone play it. These types of games usually make the best of lists every year, so think Mario Kart 8, or PS4 Spider-Man, or the recent release of Ghost of Tsushima. And for good measure, 10. 10 is an outlier just like 5. Just as 5 is bad and should never be considered, 10 is a theoretically perfect game, and an instant classic. And while I think no game is technically perfect, this type of game transcends it and becomes a phenomenon. And not in a flash in the pan kind of way. I mean, nobody will remember Fall Guys or Among Us in 10 years, but they will remember Ocarina of Time or Tetris or any number of games that make the best of games of all time lists. And while the best game is subjective, 
No one can deny that these games are incredible and definitely classics. But since it can be subjective, my number 10 may be your number 9 or less. Some of the best games of all time, for me, are arcade racers like Midnight Club 3 or Blur, the first of Forza Horizon, and even shooters like the first Lost Planet. These may not make the best of all times lists, but to me, these are the cream of the crop. I can't deny Mario Brothers or Legend of Zelda or Final Fantasy VI or any of the greats of the past, but I feel that some of my personal favorites are definitely worthy of being among those giants. So there it is. It isn't a perfect system, and I'm sure you'll have an opinion on it. And I'd like to hear it, so leave it in the comments. But now that I have a legitimate system in place, I hope this makes the review scores more understandable for everyone in the future. So again, let me know what you think, and I'll see you soon. Till next time.